Good evening all. Yes, I'm working under artificial light this evening. Well, that's if my battery holds up. It's uh, hovering between 12.1 and 12.0 at the moment. It's got a constant draw on it of about an amp from my security camera. And we just haven't had a lot of sun recently, but uh, let's see how we go. So I finally got my 2.4 inch LCD. And of course that's for the Banggood uh, DSO, or at least the JYE Tech DSO138 oscilloscope. So I'm gonna open this package and uh, put the LCD on here. I hope it comes with connectors, but uh, we'll soon see. Right, so it's in here. Now, before I go any further, I was a bit concerned that one possible reason for the old one dying within a couple of minutes may have been uh, static. So I'm gonna open this. I mean, there aren't any uh, anti-static precautions taken in the wrapping of this, but I'm gonna take some precautions in the unwrapping because I just want to do everything I possibly can to uh, mitigate against another failure. Now, as you can probably imagine, I don't have an anti-static mat, so I'm gonna bodge something up using the uh, earth pin out of a plug, a one meg resistor, and some wire. Well, I couldn't find a one meg resistor, but I've got a nice old 1.8 meg resistor here, that'll do. So here's my bodged up um, ESD mat, anti-static mat. Um, earth pin there with the one meg resistor, a piece of wire and a crocklet which I'm going to attach to this piece of aluminium which is all mucky because the plumber used it to do some uh, soldering. Now obviously don't do this at home because I'm plugging this into the earth pin thus bypassing the shutter mechanism so ooh scary the live and neutral are now exposed I mean, in most countries, they don't have a shutter mechanism, so I'm not sure what the big concern is about. But anyway, that looks reasonably safe to me. And then the other end, I'll clip to the aluminium plate. Right, so this plate is now uh, grounded to mains earth through a 1.8 meg resistor. So I'm going to keep my palms on it at all times while I open this with its not protected uh, packaging. And I'm going to just carefully remove this without creating static. Right, let's unwrap that with a minimum... Oh, it's a bag. Well, I'm going to have to cut this then if it's a bag, aren't I? And uh, try and extract it without creating static. But I'm keeping my... Oh, I'll just tear it. Keeping my uh, palms on the aluminium. Right, okay. Now, no connectors, I noticed, so I'm going to have to fudge something out for those two. Now I can only find this uh, single row of pins uh, thing. So I haven't got a double header, so I'm going to have to put the two singles in and solder it while it's in the board. Um, I'll earth my soldering iron to this, although it should be earth anyway. Um, now the other thing is I made this difficult by putting the sockets on the LCD, so they'll have to come out, go on the main board, uh, and then the pins, the mounting pins, We'll go into these two holes, top and bottom. So let's do that now. Right, that's all done. Uh, the uh, mounting points here, the right way up now. Uh, all the pins have been soldered on the LCD. Now, a lot of people didn't like my choice of um, a switch mode power bank for the power supply. So I'm gonna go with a nine volt battery. I've got a couple of leads here. So this is a genuine unrehearsed power up. Let's make sure I get these the right way around. Although I think there's a diode for reverse polarity protection, but never the less. And there we are. It's working. Now, of course, I've already fixed the um, minus five volts, so we should be getting a trace. We're not, but I can uh, soon connect the leads onto the test point, so I'll do that now. Uh, well, this is a scary moment, but I've got a feeling this could be just low battery. I'm not sure what charge level is in there. It does seem to be changing brightness quite a lot when I reboot it. So I'm gonna to switch back to the power bank now. Uh, right, we're all good again. So now let's connect the positive to that test point, which is there. Gosh, that's ever so noisy. Uh, the negative should be grounded. Now, how do I bring this thing down, that's the time base by the look of it. 
I'll just have to play with this for a moment to work out what I'm doing. Right, I've managed to get uh, a stable trace of the test point, but there's an incredible amount of noise on here. Now I know this thing is rather prone to noise, but uh, I accept that this could be the power bank supply. So I'm just going to try this battery and see how we go with that. Well, the 9 volt battery was completely gutless and although it came on this uh, display, it just sort of went slowly off to the bottom. So big, powerful bank of inner loops here. Um, so at least they'll hold up completely noiseless uh, supply, of course. And there's still an awful lot of noise on the trace and people have witnessed this noise in their reviews. Now this isn't my review of course, this is just me trying to get this thing going, but I'm going to have to just ignore this noise for the time being and look at some other signals. Hmm, hmm what should I look at? Okay, here's another square wave. Um, nice and accurate uh, time base, but then I suppose it would be because it's locked to the crystal on the microcontroller, I would imagine. Now I am cheating a little bit here. I've also turned off the overhead lighting because it was reflecting a bit. Uh, this is the one kilohertz five volt square wave coming off my O1 oscilloscope, so that should be completely noise free. And as you can see, it's not. Let's halve the time base. No, that's not the time base, that's the position. Uh, let's select the time base. And uh, it's just full of noise. So it's definitely the uh, DSO138 that's creating this noise. Um, I understand from some of the comments that there may be a new less noisy version uh, of the main board, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Anyway, as I say, this isn't my review. I've now got it uh, attached to its own test point again. Interestingly, it's uh, wavering there. Oh, some Chinese has come up. Where did that come from? Not sure what I did there. Um, it's wavering there. Now, if I set the um, sensitivity, oh, not that one, perhaps this one. It's not so wavery. But there's a bit of a wobble there, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, yeah, so this test point is 3.3 volts and on the times one switch position we've got uh, yeah, about 3.3 uh, vertical divisions. On the times two, of course that halves, and the times five, I'm now off my trigger, so it's losing trigger there. But um, yeah, the time base and the uh, analog side of things look pretty good. It's just this noise, it's, it's awful. but this is really just uh, the finishing part of my kit build. The kit is now built and the scope's working. Now I'm just gonna switch back to uh, the power bank which is set to nine volts to see whether this noisiness changes. And it doesn't seem to make an awful lot of difference. It's just got the same noise level on the power bank as it had on the uh, Eneloop batteries. But anyway, it works, that's it, it's finished. Um, it's very stable in well, it's very clean in time base and the analog seems quite accurate, but the noise is just um, really excessive. Now, as for the LCD, um, I don't really know what caused the first one to fail. Um, maybe it was static. And uh, I mean, the best thing they could do when shipping this kit, if this is static sensitive, at the very least is to put this in an anti-static bag with suitable labels and warnings and that would uh, make all of us take a little bit more care in not zapping the uh, all these various pins here. But I just don't know. But anyway, with the new LCD, that's now working. So my kit build is finished. Cheerio.